tried to synchronize the ventricle. It worked. We came up with trials. That's how it works. Or we had a crazy Swedish professor who thought, taught us that beta blockers, who were at that time were contraindication, taught us, well, they will be life-saving ter therapy. We need approaches like that. That was Carl Swedberg. So and when I read the program, we put that together and came up with someone who said you can smell heart failure. Well, uh, we learned that dogs can smell cancer or something like that. We read that with interest, but shows us that our senses are all not sharp enough. We are arrogant bees breed we human beings. We think we know everything, but we only see a limited scope and smell nothing. And so I, I think that is fascinating. I'm really uh, looking forward to your talk. Good day, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chairman. I am representing the University Hospital of Jena in Germany, and uh, I'm waiting for my presentation, which I don't see. You have to press the escape test. Yeah. I'm presenting the smelling of the heart failure and the evaluation of an electronic nose. The chronic heart failure is a common, costly, disabling, and potentially deadly disease. 2% of the general population in the developed countries uh, suffer from chronic fa heart failure. Over the age of 65, this percentage uh, rises up to 6, up to 10%. The costs of hospitalization, the high health expenditure, the significantly reduced mental and physical health of the patient uh, leads to a decreased quality of life and an increased mortality and morbidity. What we tried to develop was a mechanism for the early detection of chronic heart failure through the periodical screening and the facilitation of an early treatment application uh, later on. Our aim was to have an accurate method, a simple method, non-invasive, non-invasive, invasive, excuse me, and reproducible so that we can early identify the chronic heart failure and in the future categorize it. We screened each and every patient who came to our clinic uh, with uh, uh, a chronic heart failure status. Either was it uh, through the laboratory parameters or through the clinical status of the patient. That was about 1,000 patients in uh, 12 uh, months. 250 from them could pass in the study, 130 uh, were included, 80 were uh, for the statistical analysis uh, included, 27 from them with decompensated chronic heart failure, 25 with compensated heart failure, and, 20, and we, we formed also a group of a healthy group without any symptoms. In both heart failure groups, decompensated and compensated, the use of cardiovascular drugs and comorbidities, they were common, almost identical. The data acquisition according to our uh, um, standards was possible in all 80 patients we included, and the physician who did the inclusion didn't know the group to which the patients were assigned to. We used this applicator, which you see, we made a special skin preparation so that we can minimize other uh, odor molecular types uh, without using alcohol or something like that. And uh, we made random uh, measurements, 10 cycles of three minutes each. What we found, an 89% sensitivity and 88% specificity in uh, the groups decompensated versus compensated heart failure, and the heart, both heart failure groups in comparison to the healthy group, we had an 89% sensitivity and 84% specificity. Of course, it is, this is a pilot study. We are may, we're going further now, and we're trying to identify the responsible components uh, for this differentiation. We're trying to evaluate and create more sensible to various odor and molecular type sensors. 
And uh, of course, we have to go, any, to go further and find a method for a faster result presentation so that we can, as I said, with a non-invasive uh, method, a result about the category of the heart failure in which a patient can uh, go to without using any dogs or any special abilities, so to say. Thank you for your attention. <clears throat> well, thank you. you. You left me a little bit puzzled. How does it work? Uh, that's yes, what would... if I tried to um, describe the whole technical uh, details that uh, were used, uh, we would need a couple of hours, so but to say. But this sensor, which we place on the forearm, has a, a chip which takes the, um, the skin gases. Okay. It goes through a uh, gas chromatographer and over a special system which is uh, um, stationary in the University of Applied Science, uh, Sciences in Vienna, they make a molecule analysis with uh, different um, sensibility of the uh, special smells that w are produced through the skin and thus we were in the position to differentiate the special groups. These sensors were for, uh, already tested for other um, smells like, um, what can I say, garlic or uh, uh, onion or special um, uh, perfumes, uh, alcohol, uh, so that we can see that uh, this chip can uh, actually differentiate smells and odors. But what is so specific for the heart failure smell that you pick up there? Uh, that's what exactly we're trying to find now, which is the molecule type uh, that is uh, detected. It is a pilot study. We have seen that the heart failure patients can be differentiated from, the, from a healthy group. Okay. And now we're trying to find which molecule is exactly responsible for that. Uh, Reed Miller at theheart.org. Can you expand a little bit about how a technology like this would improve upon the uh, heart failure uh, detection and screening methods that we already have? Non-invasive uh, and um, reproducible. We're trying to make it fast. Now we are only at the beginning, so to say. Uh, but um, we're trying to improve the accuracy. I already told you that we're not very far. We are, have indications that it can work. And um, it doesn't have to do anything with uh, a, an echocardiography or a, a blood test. It is um, less painful for a patient. We all know that a cardiac uh, heart failure patient is really a sensible group of patients and um, it has only to do with the placement of a device on the forearm. Hi, Sherry Boshert with Cardiology News. Uh, two quick questions. One is, do you have any disclosures of conflicts of interest? Um, yes, I do. Can you say what those are? Uh, we developed this plan in collaboration with the University of Applied Science and, uh, and there is uh, uh, a pattern that is running uh, right now, so... Okay. Um, what gave you the idea for this? There have been some plans uh, with the use of this uh, electronic nose uh, in uh, correlation with uh, renal dysfunction and uh, liver dysfunction and thus we came to the idea to test it uh, also for a heart failure. And last question, if it turns out that it is helpful to identify um, early heart failure, how would that change management of patients? What would you do different for the patient if you could use this to detect the heart failure? It's uh, a device uh, for the um, detection and not for the therapy. 
the therapy is another field of uh, research, not uh, in the actual discussion. Frédéric Soumoin, le soir, uh, did you have an hypothesis of the what type of molecular? Not you don't have the response, but did you have a response, uh, an hypothesis of the molecular who are identified by the electronic nose? No. No, uh, at the time being, uh, uh, we don't uh, have a special identif ident identification which I can provide as uh, data. Um, hi, Charlene Lane, I was WebMD. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm still confused on how it works, um, specifically to explain to patients. Um, do you see a different pattern in these two things? But how would you know that one is heart failure and one isn't? And, we used uh, the principal component analysis in the statistical analysis of the data so th that we could differentiate the groups of the patients. And we have seen that the patients with cardiac uh, heart failure uh, belong to another uh, statistical group uh, in, uh, according to the uh, odor analysis, to the smell uh, analysis of the skin gases. So, so the gas chromatographer does the differentiation. So it would be correct to say you see two different patterns, two distinct patterns? I don't understand the question. Excuse I, me. I think we should uh, postpone that to after the session. I think there are still a lot of questions and uh, you have to explain everybody how that works. It's an intriguing, it's a fascinating idea. Still a long way, but that's how it all starts and uh, we're waiting. and. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, we have to.